This channel is made possible by viewers like you. My viewers, subscribers, and patrons greatly help to keep this channel going. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for all of you. Please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any uploads. And if you'd like to go the extra mile, please check out my Patreon page. For just a dollar a month, you'll get access to what I'm working on, previews of upcoming content, and even early videos, along with other tier options for those that are interested. Thank you, and now on to the video. Back in 1998, an overlooked yet still beloved PS1 title was released. An internal team at EA was looking to make a new action title, where the player would assume the role of a mech used by law enforcement to help maintain the peace. The city would be infested by crime and was in need of harsher methods, which is why these special teams of mechs were used. The mech itself would be armed with various weapons used to eliminate any and all criminal activity. Added on to this was how the mech could transform into a car, as the means to provide the player with even more options while in combat. Future Cop LAPD was a game that sold decently for the time, and was beloved by those who played it. But it was sadly one of the many PS1 titles that has now gone overlooked. When brought up, most players have only positive things to say, and when seen through a modern lens, the game actually holds up pretty well, and much of its merits and quality are pretty timeless. Oddly enough, the developer of this title was made by the same one that is known for original properties like Dead Space, Dante's Inferno, their excellent licensed games like Bond, Godfather, and The Lord of the Rings. Future Cop is a title that not many know was even made by Redwood Shores, later known as Visceral Games, but it most certainly showed that they could make great games and started off very strong. Join me as we take a look back at Future Cop LAPD. Redwood Shores was created from a small group of developers who were previously part of EA's Tools group. Many of them even worked on some 3DO titles as well, such as the Shockwave games. During the early to mid-90s, EA's Strike series was fairly popular, and as such, new entries were released on almost a yearly basis. In 1997, their most recent entry was Nuclear Strike, and included within the game a cutscene that gives a sneak peek at what would have been the following sequel. This next title would be called Future Strike, and would be Redwood Shore's very first game. With the game in its very early stages, these developers were throwing around different ideas for the sequel. They also had access to an engine from their prior Shockwave games, and thought that they could push past the limitations of the prior Strike titles. A helicopter would still be a playable option for players, but this wouldn't be the only vehicle featured within this title. The helicopter would have the ability to transform into a mech, allowing for players to have seamless air and ground combat within the very same mission. The developers have cited that during the conceptual phase of the development, they toyed around with different settings to use for their upcoming Strike title. They liked the idea of combining elements from the Mad Max films and the Fallout games, to have the player be a wanderer needing to explore and battle across the wasteland. At the same time, management and even EA's marketing had other plans for this title. Management was not impressed with Nuclear Strike sales. To be clear, the game sold well, but not well enough for management. Redwood Shores cited that EA was looking for big blockbuster delivering titles, so if games didn't hit that magic number, then management was taking their attention somewhere else. So while the developers still had plenty of creative freedom with their game, there were going to be some changes coming down from up top. For one, Future Strike was now not going to be labeled as the next entry within the Strike series. It was going to be more of its own thing, and more of a spin-off-like title. Secondly, EA Marketing did not think they could market the Wasteland setting that the developers were throwing around. Marketing then suggested that the studio focus more on cops and thought that could be more marketable in their eyes. So after some early changes, Future Strike was dropped for a new name. The setting changed, and even what transformations would end up being. This is where Future Cop LAPD started to really take shape. Being that Redwood Shores was based in LA, they thought it would be a good idea to set their title where they lived. They used a map of the area and started planning out ideas for the setting. For example, Future Cop would be set within the not-too-distant future, where all manner of crime has taken over. The cops are the only thing holding back the chaos from completely winning. 
Special mech-armed police units would be used to help take down the criminals. The player would be piloting one of those mechs and would act as judge, jury, and executioner. Iconic areas from LA would be featured within the levels, and different foes would be occupying each region. The mech carried over from the original Future Strike idea, but the transformation would be different. Instead of transforming into a helicopter, the player would switch between the mech and a hover car. The game allowed for the player to switch between as they see fit. The idea was to give the player the freedom in how they choose to handle a situation. Sometimes there might be multiple solutions to an encounter, and it would be up to the player's choice to figure out how to best survive. For example, there might be traps or explosives, or maybe a mech could find another way around to jump over them, or maybe you stay in the hover vehicle and pass them by. Various weapons and tools would be at the player's disposal to aid them in combat. The player would have access to all manner of machine guns, missiles, mortars, flamethrowers, along with a few secret ones to seek out. Future Cop LAPD would provide two separate game modes to choose from. Crime War would act as the story mode, where the player would clear the city fighting in different areas, earning new weapons, and blasting away a variety of enemies, from foot soldiers to other vehicles and especially turrets. This would also be playable in a two-player option as well. Precinct Assault would be another mode, and this would feature more strategic elements added on to the run-and-gun shooting. Players would need to figure out how to capture the opposing team's base, along with using turrets and allied vehicles to help them out. Being that this game was being developed for the PS1, PC, and Mac all at the same time, this mode is often cited as one of the first iterations of the MOBA genre. Following the release of Future Cop LAPD, the game received favorable critical scores, along with good player reception. It seemed that everyone who ended up playing the game really enjoyed it, but the problem ended up being not with the developers, but rather with management and the marketing again. Oddly enough, EA Marketing found Future Cop to be a hard title to market, and could not find the right way to do it. As such, sales suffered and the game sold poorly to them. While the developers were interested in this becoming a potential franchise, this ended up not being the blockbuster that EA was looking for, so attention was then turned towards another project. While the sales may have suffered, the game certainly showed that the talent and passion put into the project could be felt by the player. In September 1998, Future Cop LAPD was released to the world. Future Cop LAPD is a mech-based action game. It's one of those older retro titles that while it shows its age with its visuals, the meat of it with the gameplay mostly ages really well. This is a blast to play to this day. It's really easy to get into and understand and get right into the fun. Plus, when you look at the whole picture, Future Cop provides a wealth of content to enjoy. From its more traditional campaign and then its multiplayer-like mode that essentially was the godfather of MOBAs. Everything can be played in single player through the campaign and precinct assault versus the AI along with co-op and multiplayer options. This is also a title that I really wish I knew about as a kid because this would have been something that I really wanted back then. I pretty much lived off of local and split screen co-op and multiplayer. I played too many games and I was always looking for something new to play with my friends, especially when they came over and Future Cop would have checked all the boxes that I was looking for. But most importantly, I finally got to play it now and it deserves a lot of praise. Now like I said, Future Cop is pretty easy to pick up and get right into. It takes a few minutes to get used to aiming and moving, all being tied to the left stick. But after playing within the first level, it will feel all natural. You have plenty of different weapons to use, everything from machine guns, various missiles, flamethrowers, mortars, and a lot more. Your task is to blow up most structures and anything that moves. Strafing is your best means of defense and it allows you to stay on the move and keep firing off all your explosives. Levels also have pickups for you to grab from enhanced weapon stations, more ammo, and health. Grabbing the enhancements for your weapons will even change how those weapons operate, usually providing you with more explosions. Like instead of firing off one mortar, now your launcher can do several at once. Enemies come in all shapes and forms, from plenty of land vehicles, turrets, flying enemies, mobs of henchmen, and a lot more. And again, Future Cop gets it right from the very start. You get a quick tutorial on the basics, and then you're thrown right into the action. Future Cop features an interesting mechanic, where at any time you can transform into a hover car, or back to your mech. The car allows for more speed, whereas the mech is great for situations where you need to jump up. The game will require the player to use both of these forms to complete each of the levels, along with allowing for the player to use the preferred mode as well. There's this nice middle ground to providing the player with enough guidance to know what they need to do, along with opportunities to figure out and give that sense of ownership and satisfaction in solving an area. This is furthered through the use of being fed information from your partner in the mini and pause map screens. Many times you might need to use a certain form to get through a spot, 
These are kind of like puzzles. For example, there were spots where I needed to be fast to unlock an area of the map to the next point. The mech cannot move that fast, but the hover car can or I might need to make a few jumps to get to the next part of the level. One cool part early on required me to end the lockdown to get to the next area. I thought I needed to kill all the criminals here, but that wouldn't open the door. So I happened to find something that kind of looked like a terminal, and the game alerted me, letting me know that there were more of them out there. This is the type of figuring it out type of stuff in the game. The right amount of guidance and space to allow the player to do it for themselves, without being babied and thus makes it all the more rewarding to complete it. Something else I give the game credit for is trying to provide a camera that is dynamic to the character's movement and actions. So if you are in a very narrow pathway, the camera will try to pull up to try and give you the better view. In set locations, you'll have a dramatic zoom in for a crowd controlled moment. Levels do a great job at bringing the variety. Each of the levels look different, have new enemies, feel different in their structure and design. For example, one level is much wider and features more water to hover over, whereas another is very vertical as you essentially climb to the exit. As a result, the campaign always remained entertaining and was something that I wanted to go back to as well. Future Cop has a bunch of personality, where it has this uniqueness and even some humor to some of the bosses, or some of the funny gags that happen at the end of mission cutscenes. The best of all are these tutorial videos, especially for the Precinct Assault mode. This is Precinct Assault. You begin inside your base. You know where the action button is, right? You'll need it. Each base has a hover tank generator. Action button. Hover tanks will seek out the enemy base. When one of your hover tanks enters the enemy base, you win. Sounds simple? I don't think so! You can generate jet choppers to protect your base from the air. These base turrets are your last line of defense. Any neutral turrets are up for grabs. Use the action button to claim them. This is an outpost. Claim it, and you've got another base. But outposts cost points. Earn points by claiming turrets and destroying enemy units. Destroy the enemy walker, earn points, and send him back to his base crying like a baby. Remember, hover tanks, turrets, points, crying. Beautiful. Now, if you're playing by yourself, you'll go up against Sky Captain, a lethal combination of smarts and firepower. This cybernetic genius can do everything you can do and more. He's got his own reloaders and can link with his base to generate units remotely. And every time you beat Sky Captain, he gets a little tougher. Oh, about the radar. The red arrow points to the red base, the blue one towards the blue base. Whoopee. So, get one of your hover tanks into the enemy base before the other guy gets to yours. Good luck. So Crime War is the more traditional campaign where you go through each of the levels battling various criminals. It is very good and a lot of fun. Co-op is an option here as well and you really need to rely on each other because of how the health system works. You share the same bar, so if you're playing with someone who is not very good, that can mean being in a situation where your partner ends up getting you killed. Working together, I highly encourage, and it provides even more replay value for the Crime War mode. But Precinct Assault is sort of like the wildcard mode. It's a deathmatch of sorts that pits two players against each other in an effort to capture the other person's base. As you perform actions like defeating enemies, you'll earn points. The points can be used to buy AI vehicles that will follow a set path to the enemy's base. There's a lot you need to manage from earning new points, constructing more allies, capturing neutral turrets, and then building outposts as well. The outposts really come in handy because they allow you to spawn more friendly units to attack your enemy, but they tend to be closer to their main base. Get one of those allies in the enemy base and you win. I like how this takes the action that you enjoy from Crime War and then adds on this real-time strategy element. Plus, this being a multiplayer mode, there's a lot of inherent variability that goes along with it. Precinct Assault pretty much provides endless replay value, and combine that with a handful of maps to play on. Future Cop did end up releasing on the PS1, PC, and Mac. I spent most of my time with the PS1 version, and dabbled a bit with the PC version too. The PC version in terms of looks and performance feels like the upgraded version of the two. It can be a bit tricky to get this older game up and running, but if you're a huge fan, this might be the go-to one for you. You might even find playing each of the versions side by side that the same weapons will dish out different amounts of damage, along with different weapon and ammo depletion. Plus there is more content found in the PC version from an additional level to other appreciated unlocks. The entire game, no matter which version, does have its fair share of secrets and unlocks, which is something I generally miss when playing modern titles. The secret weapons are pretty tough to find because the game doesn't really give you any hints. If you found one, then you stumbled across it with some luck or you're really good at reading the game. So as a whole, Future Cop LAPD is just a fun title. Even with that, I did experience some flaws within it. One area of the game that I just did not like was the jumping. 
it felt imprecise and kind of janky to use. There are some platforming parts, and whenever they popped up, I wished I could just skip over them. For example, on the prison level, since it is very vertical, if you miss a jump or fall off, you're forced to do some boring backtracking as you slowly get back to where you were with no enemies to fight. I do like the map options that are provided, but I wish that you could move the big map at the pause screen to get more information. It's static and it shows you where you are, but I wish it could move as well. The changing camera is pretty cool and appreciated, but there are times where it's a bit disorienting because the game is always trying to provide you with the optimal angle. There's a handful of parts where the use of traps or instant kills can feel really cheap and almost like gotcha type deaths or ways to deal too much damage all at once. Some issues annoyed me more than others, but overall I had a great time with this. Before we move to the conclusion, I want to highlight the quality soundtrack as well. Each of the stages have their own unique tracks and I enjoyed them all. Here are a few tracks from the game. Future Comp LAPD is an overlooked gem for the PS1, PC, and even Mac. It's a title that holds up really well, and is one that should be brought back and deserves more attention. It really is a shame that we never got any sort of sequels or anything else from this. There's a lot of potential for more things to be added on. I think it would have been cool to add in more customization and personalization for the players to dive into, like choosing the colors of their mech, more weapons, and maybe even different vehicles to change into. The hover car mode is pretty cool, and maybe could have made for a fun racing-like mode. While we never did see a sequel to Future Cop, it was the birth of Redwood Shores and Visceral Games. It is interesting to see where a game developer started. In some cases, it might not even be their best game. But in this case, Visceral started off very strong with this title. If EA still has the license to this, they should do a remaster of it. Have you heard of or played Future Cop? Did you know about the interesting precinct mode? Let me know all of this in the comments down below. If you're interested in being notified of new videos, please hit the subscribe button and bell. And if you'd like to support the channel and get early access to content, please check out my Patreon. All of the links will be at the end of this video and within the description. And thank you very much for watching.